Welcome back to class. Let's go ahead and bow in. Cheer up. Can you? All right, so now I want you to get kind of in a fighting stance, and we're going to just be really relaxed at this point, and we're going to move around. So when I say really relaxed, I mean really relaxed. So hands here. I don't want you putting any muscles, keeping them up. I want you just kind of bouncing around, but notice how my hands are just, they're just kind of flopping. They're not doing anything. I'm moving. I'm kind of turning my hips around. I'm turning my shoulders. Boom. I'm bouncing, but I'm not, I'm not trying to put any tension in. I'm kind of just letting my body just wobble. I, I, I don't know what you'd really explain this as other than just stay relaxed. All I'm really doing is turning my shoulders and turning my hips some. I'm bouncing up and down and turning. My arms are really relaxed. They're down. I'm not using any muscles to keep them up. They flop around. Same thing with your legs, your hips. Just kind of move around just like this. Get a little bit of blood flowing. So I've got a left lead right now. You can have either leg in front. If you want, you can go ahead and just switch your lead. Boom. And same thing. I just want you moving really relaxed, no tension in your body right now. Turn your hips to the side. You can turn your feet out, kind of like our modified hip twist if you want. Turn your shoulders some. Bouncing up and down a little bit. Just get that blood flowing throughout your body. Keep going. Nice, relaxed. Just work on being really relaxed. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with the left lead with this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be here and we're gonna do kind of like a skip, but it's not really gonna be a skip. I'm going to press off my back leg and I'm gonna bring my back leg up to my front leg. Then I'm gonna press off my front leg and bring my front leg to my back leg. So I'm just hopping one way, hopping the other way. Notice how I'm touching my other foot to it as I do this. I want a little bit of a hop, not quite this See, this is just a step. I'm just reaching out. I want you actually for a split second, both your feet are in the air. So it is a hop. I'm coming off the ground. You don't have to put a lot of power into it. You don't have to go super far. So go ahead and do this along with me if you haven't been already. Just hop one way, hop back. Hop forward, hop back. Hands are up a little bit more now, but they are still gonna be nice and relaxed. We're not going too fast with this. You don't have to. But this is, it's a little bit of a different footwork that I'll use in a moment where I'm like, oh man, I'm about to get hit. Sometimes I call it a oh crap moment where whoo, I hop back and I just, I really need to get out of the way fast. And that's what I'll use something like this for. But right now we're just practicing nice, easy, get the blood flowing a few more times and then we'll switch sides. If you want, you can practice going further or you can practice going up higher. If, if you want, if you're not quite warmed up yet, you don't feel like doing that, don't worry. Just keep it nice and easy for now if you need to. But I do want both your legs in the air at one point in time. So it's just a forward and back motion here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch sides and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna press off my back leg and my back leg follows up, touches my front leg. And the same thing, going back here. And here, hop, hop forward, hop backwards, hop forward, hop backwards, forward, back, forward, back. Touch your other foot, touch the foot that just pressed off to the other leg. Sometimes if we're doing this, that other foot will and it'll come behind us. So that's kind of why I want you practicing touching the leg or at least bringing it to the leg because when I'm going back, this one might just step right through and go back because I have a lot of momentum going backwards. It might be something kind of like that. But if you're pressing and you're just kind of dragging this uh, leg here, you might not get that step as easily. And sometimes you really just need to get out of the way. Keep doing a few more. And if you have that leg already practiced, Raising up, it'll be easy for you to just completely clear out of the way. All right, now we're gonna do basically the same thing, except for we're gonna go side to side. So I'm gonna start off on one side. I have my line here. 
I'm going to hop, bring this leg up. Hop, bring this leg up. Now with this, I want you to try to catch your balance here. Boom, catch your balance. Hop over, catch your balance. You don't have to press off real hard. You don't even have to go real far right now. If this is all you can really do, that's fine. But I want you to hop off, catch your balance. Catch your balance. Catch, catch. As slow as you need to, hop on side to side. Do a few more. Try to catch that balance. Pause for that second. And press off. Pause. Press off. Press. Press. All right. So let's go ahead and start stretching a little bit. Probably have a little bit of blood flowing going on now. So we're going to start off. Feet together. Knees completely locked out. Lock your knees out. Make sure they're not bent at all. Reach down, touch your toes, bounce a few times. One, two, three, come back up. Take a breath in, breathe out, bounce again. One, two, three, come up and down. One, two, three, up and down and bounce. One, two, three. Maybe you started off with only your fingers touching the ground. Maybe the fingers didn't touch the ground. Try to go down a little bit further on each bounce. And again, breathe in and out. Now I can get my knuckles down. Up. Breathe in and out. Now I can get my palms down. But I started off with only my fingertips going to the ground. One, two, three. All right. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do our socket stretch. You know, these ones are my favorite. Always got to hit all around the legs. That way we can get that good flexibility for those high kicks. Get that socket stretch going. Try to push it down into the hip or the hip down into the ground. Make sure you're breathing. Don't hold your breath. And socket stretch to the other side. If you want, you can bounce a little bit. If not, you don't have to. I usually like to bounce a little at first, but it's going to be completely up to you. Now let's go ahead and turn our back foot. We're going to get that lunging hip stretch. Remember, this one should be right on top of the leg, right on those hip flexors. And let's go all the way to the other side. Bounce if you'd like. Now we're going to sit on our leg. So you, you can do this. You can sit flat-footed. You can be on the ball of the foot if you want. You can even drop this knee down. You can sit on this and bring that heel down or the whole leg down if you'd like. Whatever you need to be able to do in order to get this nice hamstring stretch. I like to go here, but if you can't do that, then modify it to make it so that you can. Again, we're just focusing on this hamstring right now. However, this back leg is configured isn't as important. Make sure we get that nice hamstring stretch. And now we're going to switch all the way to the other side. Same thing. Make sure we're getting that nice hamstring stretch. That means this knee has to be locked out. If this knee is not locked out, you're not going to get as good of a stretch. So get that knee locked out. Reach down for it. Try to reach with your whole chest going down. Sometimes you can reach with your hand, but it causes a bend in your upper back. And it's just more from the upper back. We want to reach with our whole chest. Even if we can't touch our foot because of it, reach with your chest not with your arms as much. We're not trying to curve our back. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're going to put the outer portion of one of our legs on the ground, just like this. We're going to straighten our back leg. So kind of like if we were in our, um, ham or our lunging hip stretch here, we're going to 
drop this knee down just like that. So that back leg is kind of the same configuration. I went from on the ball of my foot to on the uh, top of my foot, right where my shoelaces would be. And now we're just going to reach forward with our body. You should be feeling this on the outer portion of your leg, kind of near your glutes, is what this should be stretching. If you have too big of an angle here in this front knee, it might be very difficult. You might have to bring it in even more in order for you to lean down. That's going to be completely up to you. I try to get 90 degrees, but sometimes even I can't do that, and I have to have less than 90 degrees at that front knee bend. And then just reach down, get your chest here. You can adjust it according to however you are. And now I'm going to do the same thing off to the other side. So if you want to think of it again as that lunging hip stretch, then putting that back knee down, then dropping this front knee down and leaning, you can do it that way, or you can just go right into it if you've done this before. All right, now we're gonna come up and we're gonna do everyone's favorite part. We're gonna split. Let's start with a side split first, whichever side you'd like. And let's come up, go all the way to the other side and go back down. and come back to the front and drop it down. Try to get your toes pointed up on this one. And stand up, hip twist. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our kicks. So we're gonna do Front kick, roundhouse, side kick, sequential. So what that means is we're going to kick, front kick. We're gonna bring it back behind us. We're gonna kick, roundhouse kick. We're gonna bring back behind us. We're gonna kick, side kick. We're gonna bring back behind us. That's gonna be one count. All right, we're gonna do the 10. So it'll be kind of like we've always done, except for now we're gonna go one, two, three, all on one count. Ready? Start with your right leg and hana. Front kick, kick with the ball of the foot, bring it back. Roundhouse kick, bring it back. Side kick, and bring it back. Three. Front, back. Round, back, side, back. Set. Front, round, Side. Hit. Front, bring it back. Round, bring it back. Side, bring it back. Does Front, kick with the ball of the foot. Round, top of the foot. Side, with the heel. Yes. Front. Round, side. Feel good. Front, round, side. Hit over. Front, round, side. Aho. Front. Round, side. Yay. Front, round, side. Take a breath. Breathe in, and out. All right, so now we're gonna switch legs and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So remember, when we're doing this, kick with the ball of the foot. So pull those toes back, 
on that front kick. And then we're going to kick with the top of the foot for that roundhouse. And then we're going to kick with the heel as we do that side kick. So we have three different impact points as we're doing this. So I want you to keep that in your mind whenever you're kicking. Know that I'm kicking with the ball of the foot, I'm kicking with the top of the foot, I'm kicking with the heel. Three different impact points as we're doing this. All right, left leg, ready? Front, bring it back. Round, bring it back. Side, back. Three. Front, round, side. Set. Front, round, side. Ned. Front, round, side. Now this one. Front, round, side. Yeah, this one. Front, round, side. Is it good? Front, round, side. You know, front, round, side. Aho, uh -huh. front, round, side. Yay. Front, round, side. And take a breath in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathe out. And then and out. And in and out. And in and out. And and out. All right. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to teach you something. All right. This is going to be really complicated. We're going to go over some of the stances. Uh, it's going to be, it, it's really difficult, but I think you're going to get it. So we're going to start off, chair up, jumbe, and we're going to do our side stance. Like I said, it's, it's really hard, but uh, I think you guys are going to get it by the end of this class. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay in our jumbe right here. I'm going to lift up the front part of one of my feet. So I got my right foot lifted up. I'm going to keep my heel in the exact same spot. I'm going to turn my foot 90 degrees, and I'm going to set it back down. All right. Did you get that? I know. That's a hard one. It's a hard one. Let's do it again. Chair up. Jumbe. We're going to raise up the front of our foot. Keep our heel exactly where it is. Turn it 90 degrees, and we're going to set it right back down. All right. I know it's difficult, but I think you got this already. So we're going to do the same thing onto the other side. We're going to be in our jumbe stance. You can put your hands on your hips if you'd like. We're going to raise up the front part of our foot. We're going to keep our heel exactly where it is, and we're going to turn it to the side and set it back down. And this is going to be our side stance. So since my left foot is the one that's pointed out now, this is my left side stance. But if I go here, I know I switched real fast on you. This is my right side stance. Got it? So if my right foot is pointed outwards, it's my right side stance. My left foot is pointed outwards. It is my left side stance. With this, make sure that we do have this 90 degree angle with our feet. Kind of like if we were in our back stance, except for we're up. It's Jumbe with one foot turned off to the side. All right, so great. You mastered the side stance. Now we're going to go into our tiger stance. So our tiger stance is going to be just like this. So let's get into that. We're going to, and we'll start facing forward. I'm going to shift my weight. So all of it, 100% of my weight is on one leg. I'm going to start with my left leg. I'm going to raise my knee up, my right knee, and then I'm going to bring it in closer. And I'm going to set it down. So now just the ball of my foot, not my heel, it's a little weird. Just the ball of my foot is going to be touching the ground. Both of my knees are bent. Now at this point, I have 90% of my weight on my back leg, on this leg right here. 
I have 10% of my weight on this leg. This leg's really just kind of a balance point, but most of my weight is here in this leg, so I could easily, boom, kick it here. I do have a little bit of weight on it just kind of to be able to bounce. Now let's look at how far apart it is. Does this look like a good tiger stance? Hopefully he said no. Does this look like a good tiger stance? I hope so. I hope, uh, I hope I didn't mess it up. So our hips are going to be squared forward with the way that we are facing. Our feet are not going to be in line. They're going to be offset. So the way I was taught this is start with your feet in, you can start with your feet in line. You move it over one of your foot lengths, not an American foot, but one of your foot lengths to the side, and then one more foot length to the side. So I have about a fist in between how they are here. Now, my foot's not right next to my other foot. Let's, uh, let's look at it from this angle. My toes are not in a line here. I have this one also about a fist length from where the ball of my foot. If I was here where my toes and my heel are in a straight line, I can go from that stance right there and bend both my knees. Again, both of the knees are bent on this, so I don't want a straight back leg like this and then a front knee bent. Both of the knees are bent. Let's try the other side. So if you want to start, you can start in your Jumbe stance or your parallel stance. You can put all of your weight here, bring that knee up, and then set it down. Again, I want about a fist length this direction, and then about a fist between where the ball of the foot is and the toe. Or you can just kind of put in line your heel with that uh, big toe and then raise it up. Both of your knees are bent. This is your tiger stance. Sometimes it's also called a cat stance. So if you hear the term cat stance, it's the same as a tiger stance because, you know, tigers are just big cats, right? Basically. Yeah, tigers are big cats. All right, we're going to go with that. So it's called a tiger stance or a cat stance. You might hear those interchangeably. They are the exact same thing. There is nothing different about them. So the next stance that we're going to go over, this one actually probably is going to be the hardest, just for balance purposes, is our crane stance. So you probably saw this in the old Karate Kid movies, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to touch the inside of our foot right here to the crease of our knee, just like this. Now, I'm not going to have this leg locked out. There is going to be a slight bend. If you would like to do this, you are more than welcome. It is not required. This is not required. Your hands can be here. This is our crane stance. So notice how my knee is pointed forward. I have seen some people do it like this. We're not going to do our crane stances like this. We're going to have our knees are pointed the same direction as we're doing it. And I'm touching the inside of my foot to my, the inside of my knee. If it's out here, chances are you're a little bit more wobbly. This adds a little bit more stability to it. Of course, if your balance isn't great, you still might do something like that. And that's fine. It's, it just takes uh, practice with your balance. So again, we can start here. Shift 100% of your weight onto one leg. Touch the inside of the foot. Not the, so it's not the sole of the foot or the bottom of the foot. I'm not curving it like this. Notice how that gets my knee pointed outwards. I'm just touching the inside of my foot and keeping that other knee straight. Let's go other side. Here. My knee is slightly bent. It doesn't have to be here. You're going to start losing your balance, but it's not locked out. It is has this little bit of a bend. So from the side, boom, you can see there's a little bit of bend. Maybe, maybe you can. If I do that, you can see the bend now. So here, touching to the inside. Hands here, if you just want to, you know, show off a little bit. Or you can put your hands here. Later on, you'll be doing other things when you're going into those stances. But for now, I just kind of want you learning the stance. So 100% of your weight here, inside of the foot touches, knees slightly bent, chest and knees are facing the same direction. All right, so that was the most difficult part of the class. Whew, glad we got that over with. Now, if you have a bag, I want you to go ahead and I want you to pull your bag out. If you don't have a bag, well, maybe one day you'll get a bag. Bags are great to be able to just kick on with power. You don't need a partner. This is a, Bob's a really good partner of mine. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do our spinning sidekick. So this is what everyone wants to do when I teach them back kick at first. This is everyone wants to do a spinning sidekick. So you probably are done a spinning sidekick and you don't even know it. Or maybe I told you you were doing a spinning sidekick and I told you to put that in your pocket and save it for later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand here. 
I'm going to turn like I would a back kick, except for now, now, my knee is going to raise up. So remember with the back kick, I, I've told you donkey kick. Knees slide right past each other, boom, my other knee is pointed downwards. Well now I'm going to have this space, so you can think of it kind of like a dog when they go pee, here, and I turn and I kick. So when I'm done with this kick, and I turn, boom, my hip and my shoulder should be pointed at it. Look at the side kick, head, hip, heel, all in one straight line. It's an awesome side kick. This is a back kick. See, you see my back. Here, this is a side kick. See, you see my side. You don't see my back. That's one of the big differences. It's very similar. It moves in the same direction. This one is a little bit easier to change directions on. So if I want to do a spinning side kick and my opponent started off in front of me, but Maybe I wasn't paying too much attention. Maybe they're really fast and they move. And they move to over there. Whoop, I can easily spinning side kick and change it from there to there. I can even cut it short. It's a little bit harder if you cut short just because, you know, your time to mentally see what's going on and adjust uh, is going to change. But if I do realize as soon as I start to spin, I saw them turn here. I can, boom, I can kick off to that side with my spinning side kick. So it is a little bit easier to adjust where you are kicking. One of the downfalls of this though, is if they do turn and they get to the inside, I, they have my chest completely open. Unlike when I do a back kick, boom, my arms are blocking my sides, they can't score on my back, and my chest is completely away from them, so they cannot score. And my head should be leaned away from them as well, so they can't kick me in the head. So I do give an open side when I do a spinning side kick, one of the downfalls of the spinning side kick, but it is a pretty versatile kick. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to practice it. We're going to alternate legs each time because, well, I don't like getting dizzy. So what we're going to do, stand here, get a bag. If you don't have a bag, just kick in the air. Do not hyperextend your knees, so don't kick so hard. If you're going to kick in the air, just kick, extend, but don't, don't kick with a lot of power. And now after we kick, I want you to just kind of set it down and then kind of step back. Now I'm at that same distance, but I have my other foot in front. And then do the same thing. Boom, spinning side kick, and I step back. So I just put it next to my foot, and then I step my other foot back. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Ready? Spinning side kick, alternating each side. Ready? You're kicking with the heel of the foot. Don't reach with your toes and try to hit with the ball of the foot. Don't do that. Three. Set. Nut. Bounce around a little bit. Stay nice, relax. Yes, one. Yes, one. Here we come. Get out. Uh -huh. hey. All right, so. I'm gonna go ahead and point something out. If you have a bag, you might be doing this. So I'm just gonna point it out. Do not do a spinning side push kick. Do not do a spinning side push kick. Remember the, pa the difference between a push kick and a side kick, the power gets pushed or gets put into a side kick prior to making impact. For a push kick, it gets put in after making impact. So let me show you the difference. I'm gonna do a spinning side kick. And I'm going to do a spinning side push kick. Whoa, the bag fell over. So <laughs> that's one thing that you're going to notice, um, especially kids. Kids love to do this because they love that feeling of, I knocked the bag over. Well, bags are pretty easy to knock over with a push kick. This bag weighs, I think, like 250 pounds. Um, but it's super easy for me to push kick it over. It's very difficult for me to do a good side kick and knock it over. Honestly, I should not be doing a side kick and knocking it over. So I want you to kind of keep that in mind that if you're knocking the bag over, you're probably touching your foot to it and then applying all of the power. Keep that in mind. The difference is a spinning side kick will break ribs. A spinning side push kick will not break ribs. We're looking for that impact, that power, that uh, pain more than we are just to get them off balance. Of course, if you want to do a spinning side push kick and that's what you're intending to do, awesome. Another great kick, it's, but it's something different and we need to know that that is a different kick. 
It has a different purpose. We use it at different times. So just keep that in mind. All right, we're going to do 10 more of our spinning side kicks, not our spinning side push kicks. So let's get ready. Get in front of your bag. Boom. And make sure you see your target. Set. Net. Yes. Yes. Make sure we're impacting with the heel. Yes. Look up. Get off. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. All right, so if you were paying attention to me, which hopefully you were actually just kicking and not paying attention to me, but if you were paying attention to me, I threw one of those kicks to the face. I do not recommend kicking to the face with a spinning side kick. Mostly for the reason of it's pretty easy for people to get their face out of the way, especially they, they'll do it on accident too. Their face just kind of got out of the way. Something that's going straight, hitting a much smaller target like this, um, people accidentally will get out of the way or their hands will slightly brush your foot and then you'll miss. And they might hyperextend your knee. So go, go for the body every time with this. It's, it's going to do a lot more damage. Um, I don't know if you've ever actually been hit in the face, but if you weren't knocked out, you probably didn't feel very much pain. I know, I usually, when I get hit in the head, I usually don't feel pain. I, uh, I get rattled and everything kind of moves around. But a broken rib is going to stop a fight much faster than a kick to the head if you did not knock them out. So just kind of keep that in mind. Although you will get more points for kicking to the head, but you also have a much higher percentage of missing. So let's go ahead and let's move our bags out of the way, unless yours is stationary, in which case, well, listen to me talk while I move my bag out of the way. And we're going to move on, and we're going to do Taegi Samjung. We know Taegi Samjung now. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn my back. I'm going to do it a few times. We're going we're gonna to practice changing some angles on this as well. So, cheer up. Jumbe. Taegi Samjung. Ready? One. Low block. Two. Kick, double punch, opposite hand and foot. One, two, land that first punch with that foot, and then throw that second punch. Opposite hand and foot, back knee is locked out. One, left hand little block, or sometimes it's a chop to the neck. Two, cross the arms, left hand on the outside, back stance. One, two, same thing, other side. One. Two, middle block, one, two, all the way around, low block, one, kick, double punch, two, other side, one, two, look left, low block, punch, one, step, low block, punch, two, kick, now as that foot touches the ground, Low block, punch, one, kick, low block, punch, kick. Left leg goes around, but oh. Hopefully you ended in the same spot that you began. I hope you did. All right, so I'm gonna change angles. I'm going to face this way now. And we're gonna do the same thing. Trip, Jumbe. Ready? Button, two, kick, double punch, one, Two. One. Two. Make sure your thumb is not out. Thumbs in. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. Kick. Double punch. One. Two. One, low block punch, two, low block punch, one, kick, low block punch, two, kick, low block, two. Back leg, left leg, goes around, but oh. All right, let's change angles again. So I'm gonna face this way. So you, hopefully you face one way, and then you turn around and face the other way. Now we're gonna go at a 90 degree angle of, well, either one of them that we did, really. So, 
get in your stance. Make sure that you can still see me. Chair up. Dream day. Ready? Take your samdra. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. All the way around. One. Two. One. Two. One. Low block punch. Two. Low block punch. One. Kick. Low block punch. Two. Kick. Low block. <coughs> Back leg goes around. But oh. And let's change angles one more time. One more time. Chair up. Jumbe. Now, this time, I'm not going to count. We're just going to do it all together. All right? We, we got this. Ready? Take your something. See, Chuck? I forgot to yell on the last punch. What am I doing? But oh. All right, so hopefully you did not finish way before me. If you finished way before me, you're going too fast. Hopefully you did not finish way after me. If you finished way after me, chances are you just don't know the form really, really strongly. And it just kind of messed with your speed. You probably had to think about it a little bit. It's not quite ingrained in you yet. So that's just gonna take more practice. Hopefully you're right around, give or take five seconds before, five seconds after, maybe three. Try to get it out closer to the time that I'm doing it. That way you have that good pause. If you notice when I do these things, I go, I have this little bit of a pause in demonstrating that I have this ability to stop. So that's one of the things that forms really help out with is some people, they might do a block and want to have that ability to stop, to be able to turn on our muscles and to stop our muscles at the exact moment that we're, we want to. These forms really help to build in control of our own body. Uh, some people always wonder why we do forms. Well, it's, it's a whole lot of control. We're really learning to master ourselves because some people just, they have a lot of extra movements in there and we're trying to cut those out. We wanna do exactly what we wanna do. Nothing more, nothing less. We want to just really be able to define our own movements. So that's one of the big things with the forms that we want to make sure that we're doing. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do solo drill number six. Solo drill number six. So solo drill number six is a roundhouse kick, a roundhouse kick, and then a spinning side kick. Easy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. You got it. You watched the video already. I'm, I'm sure of it, right? All right. So again, it's going to be a roundhouse kick. Drop down in front, roundhouse kick, turn, spinning side kick. And we can go ahead and we can face the other direction if we'd like. Start off, roundhouse, roundhouse, spinning side kick. Turn and face the other direction. Notice this when I turn and face the other direction is not switching sides. So I'm going to do 10 on one side and we're going to switch sides. If you want to alternate sides each and every time, you can, as you kick the last spinning side kick and you turn directions, you could just switch with it and then you'll end up switching sides and you'll be practicing on both sides alternating. We're gonna, I'm just gonna do it on one side, do it 10 times, and then I'm gonna switch to the other side. That way I don't mess up on my counting, which I'm probably still gonna do anyways. So whichever one you wanna do, go ahead. That's fine, I don't mind, but I'm gonna do it that way. So get ready. And uh, roundhouse kick, drop down in front. Roundhouse kick, spinning side kick. Set it down, I'm turning face the other direction. Three. Round, round, spinning side. Set. Round, round, spinning side. Net. Round, round, spinning side. 
Yes. Round, round, spin side. Yes. Round, round, spin side. Here we go. Round, round. Don't kick through my wall. Get all. Round, round, spin side. Aho. Round, round, bah. Don't want to knock that through my wall either. And yeah, yeah. round, round, spin side. All right, so we did one one side. Let's go ahead and switch sides. We're going to do the same thing the other. I started with my right leg in the back, so I'm going to do my left leg in the back now. You do whatever side you weren't doing. Ready? Hana. Roundhouse. Roundhouse. Spinning side. Three. Round. Round. Spin side. Good. Round. Round. Spin side. Good. That's it. Here's it. Here we go. Here we go. Aho. That seems off. I think I should do one more. All right, let's do one more. Let's go. I don't know if I actually miscounted on that, but I do miscount every now and then because I just focus on what I'm doing. So if I did, cool, we did another one. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's move on to conditioning. So with conditioning, we're going to do balancing front leg extensions. We're going to do three sets of 10 balancing front leg extensions. Don't hold on to anything. Let's uh, actually, you know what? This is what we're going to do. I'm going to change it a little bit. We're going to go into our crane stance first. And then we're going to extend out. And we're going to go back into our crane stance. And we're going to extend out. So we're going to practice looking, going into our crane stance and then extending out into that front leg extension and bring it back into our crane stance. Ready? Get in that crane stance. Get that balance going. You can put your hands up now, or you can be fancy, however you want to be. Ready? Hana. Three. Go back to that crane stance each time. So touch that uh, inside of the foot to your inside of the knee. Set. Net. Desor. Desor. Here we go. Hero. Aho. Yo. All right, so we're here. We're still on our crane stance. Don't set your foot down. Watch what we're going to do. We're going to hop to the other side in our crane stance. Whoa, we did this in the warm-up. Oh, I'm already falling. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. I got to tell myself that. And we're going to do the same thing. Ready? And go back to your crane stance. Three. Set. Net. Yes. Yes. Look up. Get off. Aho. Yo. Keep balancing and hop to the other side. I know, I know. It's harder. I know. I'm falling too. Ready? Now. Three. Set. Net. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Get off. Aho. Yo. Hop to the other side. And go. Hana. Three. Get into that crane stance. Set. Net. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Get off. Aho. 
Oof. We got one more set on each side. Ready, hop. Balance, crane stance. Yeah. And go. And F. D. Set. Ned. Yes. Yes. Gum. Yo. A ho. And hop. Other side. Whoa, I'm losing my balance. This is my bad side. I can't balance on my right leg. And hana. Crane stance. Three. Set. Ned. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Yellow. A ho. And set it down. Woo. All right. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit of a burn. I'm feeling a little bit of a burn. So let's stretch out a little bit. We're going to start. We're not going to do any more balance. Let's sit down. I don't want to do any more balance. Sit down. Grab your toes. I want you to pull your knee. So don't have your knees in line like this. Pull that knee back. Just like this as we do this. You can do whatever, however you want to configure your arms and be on the elbow and just go ahead and pull it back. You should get a, some quads up here and a little bit of hip flexor when you pull it back like this. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides. Do the same thing, not knees in line, pull it back, pull it back. All right, so I don't know about you, but balancing sometimes gets me right here in the arch of my foot. So let's go ahead and let's stretch that a little bit. So to do this, we're going to come up and it's going to be kind of like a calf stretch, except for I'm going to bend my knee down. So maybe you've seen this calf stretch before where you're doing this and you can stretch the calf. Notice how my heel is slightly off the ground. Now what I'm going to do to change it from the calf to the arch is I'm going to drop my knee down here. I'm not putting it all the way down like this. I'm putting it here, that way I have some pressure. And I have, with my arms, I'm pushing back slightly towards over my toes. So I don't have all of my weight way over my arms like this. Then I just feel like I'm holding a push-up position. I'm actually pushing back and forcing my toes to bend a little bit. This, this foot's not doing anything, it's just resting here. And now I'm gonna drop my other foot down, put it back, and drop this down here. If you feel like you want to stretch your calves even more than you want to stretch the arches of your foot though, you can do your calf stretch here. It's just the same thing. You got this knee locked out now. I don't put, I try not to keep my heel on the ground. I try to raise my heel up just a little bit, but I'm trying to touch my heel to the ground. I know it sounds weird. I can touch my heel to the ground when I do this, but I'm far, far enough out so that my heel doesn't touch the ground. And because it can't touch the ground, just based off position, I'm trying to get it to touch the ground and that's what gets the stretch. But if we make it so it gets, touches the ground, you can still get some calf stretch, but for me, it doesn't work as well. So if you wanna do calf stretches on the other side, cause I was just talking about it, you can do that as well. All right, now we're gonna sit here, put our ankle just past our, the line of our um, leg. We're gonna bend this knee and bring this up close to us. This is gonna be kind of like the stretch that we did earlier where we should be feeling the stretch right here in our glutes. So it's just like this stretch here, except for now I'm using this leg here. Very, very similar, um, close to the same thing. The cool part about the other one though is I can also get a hip flexor stretch at the same time. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch sides. Put this right here. I don't like to put the ankle right on the muscle it just it doesn't it's not comfortable so i make it so it's a little bit higher up and the ankle is past the line of the leg that way i'm not feeling that uh my, the bone just shoving into my muscle because that doesn't feel good all right and let's stand up fix our uniform some 
it's falling apart like mine is. Trip, bell, couldn't you? And great job on the class, you guys.